tonight we are privileged to have the director of the Aga Khan Award for Architecture join us on the show, Baro Darakshani. I was fortunate to speak with him earlier this week and get to pick his brain in an interview to help us all understand a little bit more about the world of architecture and the importance of it. Now, Mr. Darakshani has been associated with the award since 1982 and has been its director for the past 15 years. His main field of specialization is the contemporary architecture of Muslim societies, and his professional work has included the design and the construction management of large-scale public works and infrastructure projects in Iran, as well as architectural design in Paris and Geneva. He also serves on boards and committees of a number of cultural institutions. Mr. Darak Shani is trained as an architect and planner at the National University of Iran and later continued his studies at the School of Architecture in Paris. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have with us Mr. Faral Darakshani. He's been part of the Aga Khan Award for Architecture for about 38 years, and you've been the director for 15. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. We'd like to start off with just talking about the concept of the Aga Khan Award for Architecture. I understand that it started in 1977. A lot of people know these types of Coles Notes information, but tell us a little bit about what started it and why Hazrimam wanted to do something like this. His Highness, since he became the Imam, uh, he was in charge of projects, building. Uh, there were all these schools, clinics all over the world that he had to go whenever he, he was traveling. But also, he had his own private pro pro programs in Italy, in Costa Smeralda. So he was dealing a lot with the architects and architecture. And he was not, in a lot of cases, he was not satisfied with what was the end products because they were, did not really um, fit to the needs of the people. And also the other thing is that he was seeing that there's people are losing identity. So because the Islamic world, they had a very rich identity, especially in architecture and this heritage, but the new buildings which were built, especially after the World War II, all over the world, they were not at the same line. It was something which it did not have any specific identity and quality. It was not only about the identity, but also the quality of the buildings, the quality of spaces were not good. So he was thinking how he could have an impact on making these better, correcting in a way, the way the architecture was going. And but after some consultation with a number of experts that he was always surrounded by, he c came up with the idea of having an award for architecture. And that's how the Archon Award for Architecture's idea was created, was born. Wonderful. And we know that this is not just an award. It's just not a prize pin. There's a lot of criteria that goes into picking the finalists each year. And it's not just about the building structure. So I would like to talk about in 2019, uh, the Aga Khan Architectural Award. There was a theme that Milana Hazrimam had brought up in one of his speeches there. Um, he was talking about architecture in dialogue. So for 2019, he did point to some of the reasons that the award finalists actually became finalists and then award recipients. Could you touch on some of those points and what Milana Hazrimam is looking for in his work um, four decades later still? Well, first of all, um, His Highness from the very beginning was explained that he does not want the award or these activities to become a school of architecture. It means it's not going to be something that this is how things should be built. What he was wanted to do is to create an, uh, an atmosphere, an enabling environment that you ask questions. And by asking questions, you come up with better um, solutions. The, criteria, the main criteria that which needs the quality is excellence. Excellence in approach, that's what I would say. Excellence in, pro in approach is very important because, you know, sometimes you've got some project because of the conditions where they are, maybe they are not built the best way, but the approach of that, how they've come up to that solution is very important. So the other thing which was very important is that in 1970s, when His Highness um, 
created the award, the world was not looking at architecture as the way it's looking today. Because His Highness brought a new idea into architecture. It is how we can improve the quality of life. Quality of life was not a part of the thinking process of the architects and the decision makers at the time. And now we can see that more and more this is becoming a kind of a routine that the architects are becoming aware that you have to be able to create a better quality of life. And that is how, what we can see. Now, how can we make a better quality of life? How can we have an impact? Is to better understand the context. And that were, that's where dialogue comes. Dialogue, it means that you, there is this constant talking to the other, both ways, both the architect and the client. The open dialogue that he said between the past and the future, I feel like that's something that our Jamaati members might want to learn about. So why is that one of the criteria or pillars? As His Highness himself had put many, many years ago, he would have liked to have an architecture which is inspired by the, few, by the past and have an impact on the future. So we are not looking at nostalgia. The worst thing, uh, thing to think about is that if we're going to have a kind of a nostalgic way of looking, building like how the, our cities were or our parents did or our grand ancestors or whatever, this is not the way to do it. We're not going to copy the past. We have to be inspired by the past, not to use the, uh, to lose the past. But at the same time, one has to look into the future. Future is very important. And it is always the, the role of architects and those who make buildings to think about what's going to come up. When you build a building, it's maybe it is it's built today, but it's going to last for a long, long time, for many, many decades and even uh, more. Uh, so it should serve people for in the future as well. Thank you. And a couple more things that I wanted to touch on. Honoring your own culture, your Muslim culture and your identity doesn't have to mean that you're um, forgetting about the cultural identity of where you are currently. So talk a little bit about that for us and, and why that's important for Moana Um You talk about the two aspects. The first was environment. Um, in Islam, it's we're thought that we have we are we are inheriting this world, the earth, and when we leave, we have to leave it in a better condition. So this is very important, and His Highness is, is for him. It's very important that he whatever he has been in charge as an Imam, and he has been to leave a better uh, place afterwards. So this is very important. That is today. These things are, talk, we talk a lot about environment. These environmental issues are becoming very a la mode. But in fact, it's exactly the same essence that what His Highness has been doing. And he's been following his ancestors' uh, way of looking at the nature. Because nature is the creation of God. And the human being has to make it better and not to make it worse. The second thing which His Highness was talking about was dialogue between cultures. I've been talking about this a lot, that we human beings are made of layers. And it, it is very important to understand this, that we, are, we have got layers and layers of identity and experience. In France today, over almost 10% of the population, 8%, whatever, are people who are coming from the Muslim people from uh, North Africa, but they're not, you can't call them um, Maghrebins. No, they are French because they've been there for two generations. They're no different. However, they are different. It means they've got different layers and these different layers should be seen as complementary. Okay, wonderful. I'd like for a moment potentially to maybe look at some of the award recipients from 2019 to kind of highlight those aspects that you were just talking about. If we could talk about uh, the winner from Bangladesh, I want you to explain. I thought that this was really interesting for me. Uh, the architect devised the solution 
of an amphibious structure that could sit on the ground or float on the water depending on seasonal conditions. I thought that was fascinating. So if you could please explain as to what that design was, I'm sure we'll have some pictures to go alongside here um, and talk about that to the Jamath, maybe those that don't know about it. And that's one of the projects which has got a fantastic story. It's very interesting, the story from the beginning of it. The creation, it was, it was created uh, by a Bangladeshi teacher in UK that she thought there for many years. She took all her pension uh, to go and build a school in Bangladesh. So this, the story itself is fantastic. Those people who know the B Bangladesh, they know that with the floods, it's an area which floods every year. So the land, the, all these rivers, all these streams, they just change path. So sometimes you've got a piece of land that's yours. Five la um, years later, it is under the water. Again, 20 years later, it comes back. So it is something because the, the, the water moves. So with such a condition, they had to come with a solution. This is very important when you look at this Build this project, as you can see in the images that now you, you're seeing on the screen, this is made of bamboo and it's, it's a very kind of a low technology. However, the person who's done that, he's a very, someone who knows all the different technologies. He's a very, as I said, he's been building uh, buildings in, um, rural, uh, in urban areas, high rises, etc. But he knew he had to come up with a solution for that specific context. That is what we're talking about, dialogue. It means that he understood well what the context is. Uh, to build a, a school which, would, when it comes a few months a year, it can float and then it goes back. And not into that, then he had to do a lot of innovations. For example, how you can have toilets which are floating. And these are very important, very simple solutions, but very effective and very high tech in a way, but using simple materials. So this is project which is that um, is in the service of the people at the same time using the material correctly coming up with new ways of doing things which we didn't know before so it's got a lot of innovations it is not just repeating what our ancestors have done and that is very important all right now i want to talk to you a little bit about your experience over the last 35 plus years of working alongside milana hasri mom and also working alongside and with the Aga Khan Trust for Culture. So can you tell us a little bit more about what your experience has been and what you've learned over your time with the Aga Khan Trust for Culture? Well, there is the first thing I was very impressed is that how much His Highness is involved and how much he knows. It's not a matter of he knows, it's like an encyclopedic uh, way of knowing everything. No. He has got a way to see things and ask the right questions. And um, sometimes in meetings, he comes to the architects and he says, I'm not an architect. But then when he starts asking the questions, he asks the all, uh, questions from the architects that it's very difficult for them to, to answer because he's coming right to the point. What I understood from working all these years uh, for His Highness was his vision because he's not looking at today and the immediate things which are happening. His vision is long-term. And that, I think, is has been the most inspiring for me, that you're working for the good and you're not looking for an immediate reward of things. That's how, so, something which we're trying to do and explain it to the people. The second thing is the learning. We have to learn from others, learn from our own experiences and learn from our mistakes. So this is very important uh, and we have not to, should not be shy of learning. So this is why we've also created the, um, uh, His Highness has donated five chairs at Harvard and MIT and within the Alcon Trust for Culture we've got a program for, a continuous program for education. It's very important to share what we have learned with the others. Wonderful. Kind of goes into our next segment when we're talking about city parks and city dwellings. What do you think about how the climate crisis will affect how we design spaces, especially in the developing worlds now? Um, going into that and looking at, is that something that is being looked at for the future of architecture as well? Um, just I'm going to just explain a small thing about the Alcon Award for Architecture. 
one of the things with the Alcan Award for Architecture is that it, no project which has been initiated by His Highness or there's any involvement of AKDN, AKDN can be nominated. So His Highness was trying by creating the award to show what good other, other people are doing good that we have to learn from. So it was kind of an exchange. But he understood that sometimes he has to uh, create some uh, examples, uh, good examples. And that's how the park in Cairo, the Azhar Park in Cairo was created. Actually, it was during one of the award seminars in 1984 in Cairo that the idea of a gift to the city of Cairo as a park became, which His Highness continued it and he uh, put a lot of effort in it. And finally, after a number of years, it was inaugurated. And as you all know it, it's one of the most um, um, successful urban projects ever. Now, he understood, by, but by starting that project, we have seen that many other parks have been created, parks and gardens. Parks and gardens are very important because they've got two functions. One is environmental and second is social. Especially in urban places, parks are where people is is a, where it becomes a social cohesion becomes possible, because you go there and you see other people. That what we were talking about interculture activities. That's where it happens. It is in the public spaces, public areas. In uh, 2016, the previous cycle, there was an award given to a public space in Copenhagen. You think about why Copenhagen, Denmark, that's not an Islamic country, but it was in a neighborhood which some 60 different nationalities were living. And the architects and the landscape designers and the concept, the people who made the concept of project artists, they created an urban space with all these d different 60 nationalities can get together, can be uh, know each other. The, it, and it should be spaces that it belongs to them. So their symbols of their cities, their countries, their cultures are there, and they can just be together. So this is one of the important things about um, gardens. Second thing is that it creates, because it's very important, the green spaces in uh, cities. And in a lot of cities, unfortunately, because the way it was developed so fast, there were no planning, not much space was left for parks. Every, everywhere is not uh, Manhattan with the Central Park. Uh, so in the city of Cairo, uh, even if you go to the Google map, you look at the city and then you can spot Al-Azhar because it's the only big green space there. And that is, shows what how we can have an impact on the quality of life of people by creating these public spaces and parks in certain places because it, it helps a lot with the environment. Okay, I think you, re you went right into our next uh, question here, but I wanted to ask you architectural projects that have personally inspired you and perhaps ones that His Highness has commissioned that you see as uh, quite significant. So we're talking about the al Park, we're talking about sustainability, um, bringing that in. I believe that it was on a landfill. Is that correct from my knowledge from my high school Bethel Ilm days? Um, so just talking about that revitalization of that city, but also what are some of the other projects that you have felt potentially personally inspired by, by Milana Hasrimam? Um, for the Al-Azhar Park, I should explain that what was important is the gradual um, way that the project develops. And His Highness is, is someone who has been able to enable this to work. What I mean is that the, po the project at the beginning was only the park. But little by little, the whole area of Dalbar Ahmar, which was the, uh, the, the connection with it, was included in the project. So the project became an urban project. And it's not only a park. It is the whole neighborhood. Because for His Highness, it was very important that the, how can you do a, a development in one area and just leave the next door people in whatever they were. So this is very important that we have got um, projects which are uh, multidisciplinary. 
it is different approaches. Within the same neighborhood, education program works. The Alcon Foundation is active in health facilities, etc. It was the same in the Bagh Babur in Kabul. So it was working that how we can make around the, not only the park, but around it much better. So these are very inspiring for me. Another project for me, which I, I think among His Highness's projects are, is really one of the most, uh, uh, I would say, is a legacy, is the Arkan Hospital in Karachi. The Arkan University Hospital in Karachi is one of the best examples of medical facilities ever. Although it was built some 40, 50 years ago, some of it now has changed, a lot of additions, etc. But it has been uh, an architecture earmark. It's very important. Well, you've got other uh, uh, interesting projects as well, because His Highness was keen to bring good architects to work for me. Um, back in 1986, uh, Fuhimiko Maki was a member of the Arkan Award for Architecture's Mastery. And that's how he became familiar with the um, Arkan network. And then he has been the, the architect of imp three important buildings within the AKDN, and the delegation in Ottawa, the Mu Arkan Museum, and also the Arkan Center in, um, in London. Uh, Charles Courier is one of the people who His Highness called upon him for the creation of the Arkan Award for Architecture. And he later was the architect of the uh, Ismaili Center in Toronto. And it goes on and on and on this way. So there's this um, kind of an involvement of the award and His Highness's architectural projects. So how can the Jamath play a role, Jamathi members, play a role to help advance Malana Hazrimam's vision for the award for architecture and architecture in general? Well, the first thing which is important is for the Jamaat to understand the importance of the Arkan Award for Architecture, Arkan Trust for Cultures, diff, uh, different activities, because we've, we've also got the Arkan Music Award, the Music Initiative, the Historic Cities Program, and the Arkan Museum. So these are all of these are a series of activities which are um, talking about dealing with culture. So understanding the importance of the culture within His Highness's messages is very important. Secondly, is that once we're, we're, once we're talking about historic cities program projects like the Al Hazar Park, like the park in Edmonton, like the many other projects, we are talking about our own projects. So yes, when you go to your friends, your neighbors, to your colleagues, and you want to explain all the activities of the Jamaat, it is important to explain these projects and how wonderful they are. And the best way is to sometimes to read some of the books and uh, go a little bit deeper into not only the images, but what is the message of each of these projects. Wow, absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with Jamathi members about the award for architecture, the Aga Khan Award for architecture, or even, um, you know, the understanding as to why this is so important for Milana Hazri Mom to continue. I've been um, explaining this in different um, occasions to while I was giving talks in the Jamaat Khanas or for ITREP or different people, is the importance of the culture, the Alcon Award for Architecture and Culture in His Highness's endeavors. First of all, what I want to just uh, keep explaining that again and again, His Highness, the Hazar Imam, is not only the Imam of the Ismailis. He, as an Imam, has got a much more important um, duty to the Ummah at all. So that is very important. So he cannot do that without having, it's not only of paying attention to education of people in rural areas. It's not only keeping the hosp having hospitals or health facilities. These are very important, but you have to have also look at your yourself, the way the mind goes, and cultural activities are one of the basic, most important things. Culture is a basic need. It's 
the, it is an important part of development. And it is something which goes not only in the, the, these culture, what, it's very difficult to use the word culture development. We can use economic development, we can use social development, but we cannot, it's difficult to say culture development, but it is imp- important. And it has got the same impact in Canada as it has in northern Pakistan or uh, Gujarat or anywhere else. So, because people have to become aware of who they are, what they are, and what are their aspirations, and what they get inspired from. And that is what His Highness is trying to give the people to to um, explain to them that we have to be proud of what we have, our culture, and we have to be able to um, to tell the others how what we have is as good as what they have. Thank you so much, Mr. Dakshani, for joining us today and really helping us understand a little bit more about the need for architecture and uh, potentially that there is more to it, right? That it's not just a building like you just said. There's so many different aspects tied to it. Thank you very much.